Hello, I'm a fraudster, and I'm going to scare the living daylights out of more than one in five of you. Your online password is... Adding numbers, capitals and symbols makes your password stronger. Entertaining and informative, James Golden, a.k.a. Bo Snerdly, is on the air. 77 WABC. He's always mistakenly British. Tea crumpets. Cheerio. But he's really a Canuck. Known on all seven continents. Oh, I know who you are. America's undocumented anchorman. He's a recording star and a TV star. Tuesdays, James Golden, a.k.a. Bo Snerdly, presents Mark Stein. And yes, ladies and gentlemen... It is that time that we look forward to every week. We are joined by the most famous media personality <laughs> in the world, our very own Mark Stein. Uh, I feel, after that intro, I feel like having a scone and <laughs> after, for afternoon tea at the King Edward Hotel in Toronto. Maybe uh, in the, uh, whatever whatever it's called there, the Victoria, well, it's been close since COVID, but I think uh, fancy tea and crumpet at uh, the Victoria Cafe at the King Edward Hotel. <laughs> Mark, we, we uh, I, I threw the question out to listeners to weigh in on this whoopee thing. So I'm going to throw it out to you too. But first, let's listen to what Whoopi said. All right, go ahead, Rich. Let's be truthful about it because the Holocaust isn't about race. No. No. It's well, not about race. It's... it's about man's inhumanity to man. That's what it's about. Let's talk about it for what it is. It's how people treat each other. Okay. Now you've got critics on all from many parts of the world saying it's time. It's time. ABC, please get rid of this woman. And yet she's on the other day. She apologized. As I said, here's my fear, Mark. I, anytime you spend a portion of your life broadcasting a significant portion, there's always a chance, no matter how smart you are, no matter how wise and intellectual you are, that one day something incredibly stupid will come out of your mouth. And yeah. should people be fired for that? Yeah, I think I, because no one gets treated for the totality of their work. So you can be on air for three hours every day and everything's tickety-boo for 27 years. And then you suddenly say one thing and boom, uh, you're destroyed and your entire 27 years is destroyed with it, too. Now, I, I can't stand <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand her in anything she does. I can't stand her acting. I can't stand her on The View. <laughs> I can't, I can't stand her Oscar hosting, which uh, is still uh, seared into my memory, whatever it is, 25 years ago. I thought, actually, she, she, ten, she tried to explain it, and she said that to her, racism was something you could see. And, and she couldn't see, you know, so you can say, here's a white man, here's a black man. And she said, you know, when she looked at, uh, you know, Protestants and Jews, she saw the same white man. She tried to explain it. And the funny thing is, it, that reminded me, actually, that, uh, you know, if you read almost any 19th century or early 20th century novel, um, the 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 uh, the the, the non Jewish characters actually can see the difference in the Jewish characters. The the Jews are described as all having particular physical characteristics and being uh, noticeably foreign from the non Jews. It's a it's you see uh, you know uh, I don't know uh, Joseph Roth's uh, Radetzky March, but also in the Scarlet Pimpernel, you know all kinds of books and. And, uh, and then what happened was that uh, anti-Semitism became so unacceptable that people don't, as Whoopi just <laughs> explained, people don't even see the difference anymore. So that, uh, uh, but her basic point that uh, her basic point was of interest to me because uh, in 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 sort of uh, racially healthy people 
places. I, I think I've reached the stage where I actually don't see the difference. And then, of course, when you're in a powder keg like you are in a lot of American cities these days, you become hyper aware of the differences. Oh, absolutely. And and so and so it, in a strange way, in some strange ham-fisted way, I I thought I thought she had a point. Uh, the, the, she doesn't realize the point she's making, but it is certainly the case that if you were, as I said, if you were to be around in, say, Vienna uh, a, a 120 years ago, uh, the Jews would look different, different in the same way that uh, black and white look different. So I'm, I, I don't think she should be fired. Uh, but as I said, I'm personally antipathetic to her, and 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 so I always find it easy to defend people I loathe because I have no interest in, <laughs> I have no interest in watching the View. Uh, <laughs> I have no interest in seeing any movie she's in. Uh, I've no interest in Whoopi Gold. So she's very easy for me to defend. In that I would just say this. You know, what surprises me more than anything else is the... And it's not just Whoopi. This goes to millions who are totally uneducated about World War II. Hmm. World War II was truly a world war. It wasn't just white people with white people. It was fought in the Pacific. It was fought with brown people. Every kind of people on the face of the earth were involved in fighting during World War II. Now, of course, Hitler and Germany and the Europe, the Axis and the, and the, and the uh, <clears throat> Allied powers are most visible in it. But this was truly a world war that mm-hmm. consumed lives. I don't think today we even have an accurate death toll on all the lives that were consumed in World War II. Well, it's it's. It's true that there are whole areas of, uh, 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 and it's true for both the the Second World War and the First World War, there are whole theatres that don't even ever get talked about, like East Africa, for example, in the First World War. If you were to say to anybody, oh, uh, why don't you uh, share your thoughts on the East African theatre in the First World War, they'd look at you as if you were bonkers, but actually it was one of the most viciously fought wars between uh, between Britain and Germany in East Africa, and it was mainly fought on both sides by black uh, by black men uh, the king 's African rifles on the uh, on, on on the British side and I have no idea who the Kaiser <laughs> threw in on the other side because I'm bluffing I'm bluffing on my general expertise on the East African theater in the First World War but I know enough to know uh, about that the King's African rifles were in the thick of it uh, which is why uh, German East Africa wound up going to the British in and there was uh, one reason in the Second World War that Africa was also a theater and that reason was oil yeah, and yeah, for his, so that so that the Axis power would have resources to oil. All right, turning closer to home, Democrats. <laughs> I love this story. <laughs> Democrats have been bi itching and moaning for years with their little racist lingo about dark money. Mm. Dark, you know, it's everything to Democrats that's bad. They put the word dark in front mm. of it. So they've been. Be I itching and moaning about dark money, money, that dark black money that comes from, yeah, that jet black tar baby, dark black money that comes from Republicans whose donors, we don't know who they are. And as it turns out, the New York Times did this huge analysis. It turns out that Democrats were taking in more dark black jet black tar baby money than anybody else in 2020. Yeah, I'm so triggered now. <laughs> I hadn't realized I hadn't realized that fundraising is racist. <laughs> yeah, well. uh, and, uh, and now I'm I'm totally tra- Yeah, what it is is uh, the, the, don't forget that this is rather like the differences between the parties at the time of the election. If you you know that big piece on uh, the magazine ran on uh, after after Joe Biden was in office on fortifying the election. Uh, So Democrat dark money is fortifying money. So there's nothing wrong with it. That's Uh the that's the way they it just goes to fortify the Democrat process. 
uh, and ensure that you can have a lot more drop boxes for mail-in ballots, uh, even if you have to install them after the election day. <laughs> it, uh, it's, it's just a way of fortifying the election. What, are, what is extra- And they're saying uh, the right, on the other hand, also raised dark money. <laughs> and the example they give is uh, William Bill Crystal from the Weekly Standard. You oh, know. Yeah. Bill Crystal, who managed to spend forty million dollars in twenty twenty, people gave Bill Crystal forty million dollars to spend on the Democrat. Uh, that Spice guy <laughs> you were talking about, the guy who who was holding his uh, massive store wide clearance on all Republicans are racist spices <laughs> for the bank for the holiday weekend. Uh, that that guy, I, you'd be better off giving forty million. By he says he's broke and he needs a gift certificate to make up for all the racist Republicans who've cancelled on him. <laughs> you'd be better off uh, giving forty million bucks to uh, that spice guy because at least you'd 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 get a jar of stale basil for it. Uh, whereas what do you get? What do you get when you uh, give forty million bucks to Bill Crystal? I mean, talk about why don't why don't why don't you just uh, throw all your money in the East River and watch it float out to sea? <laughs> Love it. Okay, Mark, I got a W eight W T H, and I've changed the last letter because we're on the radio. Uh, WTH. WTH is going on up in Canada. What the hell is going up in Canada? What is this freedom convoy? Where's your prime minister? I know he has COVID. I hope he gets better. (laughs) I don't wish COVID on anybody. I've Uh, had it. It's ugly. But but they're calling him now Coward 19 because he won't meet with the truckers. The guy's got COVID. But then Mm. you've got these truckers up there. He's calling these truckers racist, bigot, misogynist, creeps. And then mm. he goes into hiding after he gets COVID. And then, and then they've got, like, more trucks than we got supply per train. All the trucks are in Canada. Yeah. What's going on here? Well, he, he is in hiding, and he's a master of disguise. Um, so he's probably, I've seen him in blackface. Yeah, so he's probably just doing, uh, you know, Al Jolson night in the Yukon somewhere. But then and, again, I saw Joy Behar in blackface, and she's still on The View. Yeah, and actually Whoopi Goldberg when uh, she was dating, uh, was it Ted Ted Danson? Danson? Yeah. So my best bet is that, (laughs) my best bet is that Ottawa's finest mammy singer is actually (laughs) secretly dating Whoopi Goldberg right now. (laughs) <laughs> He's so convincing, she may she may not even have noticed. Uh, and, uh, uh, but what what's interesting? This is a fantastic thing because truckers are the only and liberals never get this. You know, so if you're in Midtown Manhattan, you never think that that you know Whoopi Goldberg book in Barnes and Noble or the arugula at your uh, at your health food store gets there by truck. That's the only reason. Now, Bear Shelves Biden has emptied most (laughs) stores across the United States. So there's only seven items in the average supermarket. It's, it's, we, we basically reached the condition of... The, the old joke of Soviet supermarkets was that every checkout lane is for nine items or less. And, and we've, now actually, we've now actually reached that blessed state in American supermarkets, thanks to Joe Biden. So these guys are the only ones who keep things going, truckers. And truckers live their lives in their trucks, just driving hundreds of miles at a time, then pulling over, gassing up, getting a cup of coffee, and then driving a few more hundred miles. They never say anything. So to have done what both Biden and Trudeau did, requiring vaccination, truckers to be vaccinated before they crossed the border, uh, was the final straw for them. God bless them. They've been damned. There was a disgraceful columnist in the Washington Post who just did usually, as usual, like most contemporary cartoonists, he can't actually draw. The cartoonist drew a line of trucks and then put fascism on the, wrote fascism on the side of each truck. Oh, boy. And then said, hashtag supply chain. And this is, no, these are not, these are 
these are ordinary Canadians who were told two years ago when this stupid COVID thing started that it, they were the guys who had to keep things going. They had to keep thing. They had to keep driving, keep going to places, delivering their stuff, and they did it for two years. And then Biden and Trudeau turn on them and have come on this stupid. You know what? What's the point of vaccination uh, as a border check thing? Uh, because Justin has been uh, vaccinated and jabbed more than anybody else on the planet. And this is the second time he's got COVID. The second time he's got COVID. So, you know, he's, you know this is what th- those are heroic figures, those Canadian truckers. And what they did was in, in Ottawa was magnificent. I love it. So one day when we take over Canada, we have to <laughs> elevate them to the status that they belong. You know, I keep thinking about that, Mark. If we were truly the imperialistic nation yeah. that everybody said we were, we would have taken over Canada a long time ago. I keep thinking, Canada has all these resources, right, that yeah. we need. Yeah. They have oil. They have lumber. They have roads. They got like four highways up there. I read it. They got four <laughs> like national highways up there that you can scoot across from one end of Canada to the other. Yeah. They have water. <laughs> they have plenty of water. California mm. needs water. Yeah. All we have to do is send a few dozen troops up to Canada. Done deal. We own the joint. Well, well Canada is basically the house of Saud of water. And with lumber, uh, they they basically, because of the trees, they make, this is why you're not going to win a war, because <laughs> they make all the uh, toilet paper for oh. America. <laughs> so, uh, so they're basically, they're basically uh, the House of Saud of toilet paper, Canada, and it's not going to... And it's not going to go. Also, I'll tell you one thing. You know, you got to be able to look ahead. Um, I think it was the Royal Newfoundland Fencibles uh, occupied Detroit in the War of 1812. Uh, they spent a couple of weeks, a couple of months, whatever it was, five months in Detroit, and then they gave it back. Because <laughs> they knew that wasn't going to work out for them. <laughs> Because because you've got to be able to keep your eye on the big picture here. <laughs> I love it. Mark Stein, as always, what a pleasure. We will speak with you next Tuesday. Thank you, my friend. Thanks a lot, James. Where can people find you on TV? Uh, GBnews.uk. I'm on every night. Uh, it, it, actually, if you're watching in New York, the uh, the most convenient one would be the replay, which is at 9 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, Mark Stein. Ladies and gentlemen, James Golden, a.k.a. Bo Snurley, with you here at WABC Talk Radio 77. We're coming back right after.